So we're moving to our first speaker for today. It's Raja Das from, uh, she's a senior WordPress developer from Yoast. And give her a big round of applause for her. Good morning, everyone. Okay. So, my name is Raja, and I work at Yoast. And as it says here, I'm kind of enthusiastic about automated tests. And yeah, I hope that by the end of this presentation, you will also <laughs> be. So in this presentation, I would like to discuss uh, several points. Uh, first, uh, what are automated tests, the benefits of automated tests, um, how to start writing tests, and different type of automated tests, and how it's done in WordPress core. So first things first, what are automated tests? So anyone here wrote automated tests before? Heard about it? OK. <laughs> so I will go over the basic concept of automated tests. So um, don't focus on the syntax of the examples, but more on the concept behind automated tests. So automated tests is basically code or script that tests your code. So in this example, um, on the left, you can see a very simple function that sums up a plus b. And on the right, you see the test for this, a simple test for this function. So this test is consists of a name of the test, the execution of your function, and the expected results. So that's the main essence of automated tests. So automated tests can be executed uh, on your terminal while during development or through GitHub Action or other CICD pipelines. So once you execute the tests, you'll see the name that you gave the test and whether it passed or didn't pass. So there are three main types of uh, automated tests. And this is a very uh, famous uh, pyramid, uh, the testing pyramid, that shows the different types of tests. So the higher the, pyramid, the, the higher the level in the pyramid, the slower the test, the more complicated are the tests. And the lower level of the pyramid, the fastest are the tests, and the more simple, it, simple to write them. So in this pyramid, we can see, in the end, end-to-end -end test, which is testing your entire application from back-end to front-end. Uh, integration tests, which tests uh, integration with third-party APIs, and unit tests, which, which tests small parts of your code, like small units parts of your code. So the unit tests are more kind of a white box testing, and end-to-end -end integration tests are more black box testing. You don't really deal with the logic inside, just the uh, results. So then the question is, but why? So we've seen that for a simple function that is maybe three lines of code, you have to write maybe six, nine, ten lines of code just to test it. So there are several objections that I've uh, been hearing over the years. First, it takes time. So that's true. It does take time. And it's also not always mandatory, so it sometimes gets neglected. And also testing suites require maintenance. Not all, not all the time they give the right results. Sometimes you get a false positive, a false negative in the tests. So I would like to address those objections. <laughs> so I think there, the benefits are much greater than those objections. And the first thing is time. So yes, writing tests takes more time, but also, fixing bugs takes time. <laughs> so the earlier you detect your bugs or error, uh, the less time it takes to fix them. So in the long run, it actually saves time. 
especially when your code base is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's not practical to manually test so many functionality. And this is my experience <laughs> when writing tests, which other than testing your code, it also helps you to review your code. So many times it happens to me when I created a PR, it was ready, I just needed to add a few tests, and suddenly I realized, oh, I forgot this variable, I didn't use this uh, sanitization, or many things. So it helps you, it gives you uh, an opportunity to look at your code from a different perspective and review your own code, especially if you are um, one, man, one man show or developing outside a team and you don't have maybe a QA uh, team behind you or another developer to review your own code. So it gives you an opportunity to look at your code for a, from a different perspective. So another experience that I get from writing tests is that many times it helps you to to make uh, different design choices in your code. So many times I had uh, this experience that uh, PR was ready, I just need to add tests, and then I realized I can write it completely different. Actually, it happens also during contributor day <laughs> when I was writing tests for an issue that was already solved, but then we saw that it can be written in a more efficient way uh, just by writing the tests. So um, yeah, and another point here, that the more your code is complex and coupled, the harder it is to write tests. So writing tests forces you to simplify your code and decouple it. Another uh, benefit from writing tests is documentation. Well, you're actually document, documenting what you were testing and the usage of your, of your code. So, I don't know if anyone had this experience, but many times you, maybe someone else in your, in your team wrote a function and maybe he's not around and you have no idea what, what's the purpose of this code, but then you have tests and you have test cases and then you realize, oh, it does that, it accepts this, I know what it does. So indirectly, you're adding documentation to your code. And of course, it gives you confidence and stability. So once you have automated tests running, if you need to refactor your code, so you can feel confident that you can change your code and just in one, uh, one, one click test your, test your code uh, and feel confident that you didn't break anything. So it reduces stress, gives you confidence, and yeah, and actually safeguard you from changing existing functionality. So where do we start now that you are all hyped on <laughs> writing automated tests? <laughs> where do we start? So in this presentation, I will focus on unit tests. Um, so the convention is that at least 70% of your code base should be covered by unit tests. And unit tests are usually uh, easier to write and they're e fast to execute. So, so let's start with PHP. Um, I will start explaining about testing in PHP, but keep in mind that I'm going through concepts in testing. So it's not only, so th these concepts are applicable also in other frameworks or other languages. So first things first, setup. That's the most scary part about <laughs> testing, I guess. So, but it's actually much more simpler than uh, you might think. So of course you have to add your dependencies. So if you're using, uh, uh, if you're adding tests in PHP, then you will have a composer.json. You add your dependencies and the mapping of the tests directory. Then you need to add a PHP unit XML dist configuration file. So either you just copy that code and have it uh, and use it in, in your directory, or you can use a command line that does that for you. So the most important thing about tests is just having tests. Start somewhere. You don't have to uh, write the entire, cover all the entire, your entire code base with tests to get the benefits of tests. 
So once you start small, you get the, the you get used to adding tests. So I recommend starting with a very simple self-contained uh, function. So this is an example of um, a test uh, using the PHP unit. So we can see here that on the on the right we on the right we have uh, the test itself, and on the left we can see the functions in the class. So I'm importing. Let me show you. Okay. So here I'm using the class that is here, and I'm importing the test case from the PHP unit and extending it in our uh, test class like this. And the same thing that we saw in the previous example, I'm executing the function and I'm asserting the result. So the same principles apply also in PHP. Previously we saw it in JavaScript, the same idea. So when we assert our results, there is something that is important to know is assertions types. So there are many assertion types. So we saw assert same, but there is assertion for different uh, strings or assertions, uh, mathematical assertions, Boolean assertion, identity assertions, object assertion, many assertions. And knowing those assertions uh, saves you time because it, you, it saves you lines of code. And also it makes your code more, your checks more strict. So you not only check if checking if the results are the same, you, you may need to check if they are not Boolean or not uh, false or if they are uh, not integer or, so you have different assertions. The, nec the next, uh, um, concept in writing tests is not just testing the happy path. So it's very easy just to test what the code is meant to do, but we, of, we often forget to test what the code is not supposed to do. And we kind of need to be a hacker for our own code and try to break it in this case. So in this example, I'm adding three more assertions. And I'm also checking, for example, if it's an integer. So by adding tests for what the code is not supposed to do, uh, many times it leads to refactoring because maybe you need to add a safety check. Maybe you need to add a default value somewhere. So it's important not only to test the happy path. So in the previous example, I added a few assertions in a test, but actually the recommendation is to limit the assertions uh, per test. And why is that? So in this example, I have three different, uh, three different assertions in the same test, and they all check for a Boolean value. So what will happen if one of them fail? So when I execute the test, I can see that I get a fail message, but I don't know which one failed. And also, there is a hint because only two were executed while I had three. So if you have more than one assertion in your test and one of them failed and it's not the last one, then you don't know which one failed. Maybe it was the third one also, but it wasn't executed. So the recommendation is to separate the assertions to different uh, test method. But if you still want to use more than one assertion in your uh, test method, then add a fail message. So the PHP assertions and also other assertions, uh, they accept a fail message parameter. So you can add the fail message and the next time you run the test, you will see exactly which one has failed. And a pro tip, if you run your test, if you can see here the commands for running the test, if you run the test with a test docs flag, you can also have a more visible um, results. So if we're not 
allowed to use uh, if we're not, it's not recommended to use more than one assertions in the tests, then the recommendation is to use a data provider. So what's a data provider? Uh, a data provider is actually a function that returns uh, an array of your test cases. And this function is being used by your test. So in this example, we can see the data provider on the left. So the data provider can be just a simple array, but I usually always use an uh, associative array because the keys are actually the name of the tests. So um, on the right, you can see that I'm connecting the data provider to my test by a data provider annotation, and I'm passing the, diff the, the parameters that I have in the data provider to the test here. And now I can use it while running the test. And it's one test method, but it actually runs several tests. So the next time I execute the, te the test, I can see that I have four or five tests according to the size of my data provider. And, and they run separately. So if one of them, let's say the third one has failed, the fourth one and the fifth one would still be executed. So um, in most cases, most of our code is not self-contained. And of course, we use uh, WordPress functions, WordPress hooks, WordPress actions. So how do we test, or maybe other dependencies, so how do we test with dependencies? So there are two ways to test with dependencies. Um, one way is using the WP uh, unit test case from WordPress core. That allows you to test your method as if the WordPress functions are self-contained functions. And that also gives you um, tools to uh, create uh, entities or objects from WordPress, like a post or a user, and manipulate it with your function and then assert the results. Another way to test with dependencies is using BrainMonkey and Mockery. So that in includes um, mocking, uh, mocking your objects or entities that you want to test and mocking your, the WordPress functions. So the difference, is, the difference between them is that the WP unit test case needs a little bit more uh, setup to, you to be used, but it saves you writing the, the mocks. So it saves you writing those functions. Um, but using the brain monkey and mockery helps you get start writing tests without setting up uh, maybe a database, an empty database for testing or a complex uh, setup. So you can use them together or separately. So now that you know how to write tests, and we saw previously that at least 70% of your code base should be covered with tests, how do you track your coverage. So the way to do it is generate a coverage report, and that's something that is available with PHP unit and also other testing framework. So in PHP unit, the way you do it is first you need to take care of uh, making sure that uh, it, we know which function covers uh, which uh, uh, other fun which test functions is covered by which other functions. So you, we need to use the cover notations. And of course, after <laughs> um, over PHP unit uh, 9.0, we wouldn't, after PHP unit 11, we wouldn't need to use that, but for now, we have to use the covers annotation. So once you have them all covered, you have a command line, a command that you can execute, which is coverage HTML with the directory that you want to have the coverage reports generated. 
And then you get a re really nice dashboard where you can see exactly what method is covered, what lines are missing. So for example, this method is, I didn't cover this line. So that way I have a clear picture of what I need to test, what I missed testing, and I can per perfect my testing like that. But important thing to know about the coverage report is that, oh, sorry, <laughs> is that line coverage doesn't necessarily mean that you covered all the, uh, the cases in your function. So if you have more than one condition in your if statement, for example, and you only covered one, it might be green, but actually you didn't cover all the cases. So you can use this coverage report, but use it cautiously. So if you want to read more resources um, about PHP unit, so there is the documentation of PHP unit and also the WP integration test basics. And I added here um, a resource for Yoast WP test utils, which actually helps you set up the um, test with WordPress. So um, that's resources that you can use. So now testing in JavaScript. So I think testing in JavaScript, JavaScript is a bit uh, more simple, but also different. So again, basic setup, the same concept apply. We need to install our dependencies, and then we just have our command to, to run. And the tests, uh, in this case, I'm using jest. So the same thing apply. We have a data provider. So this is just an array with our test case. We have the naming of the tests. And we execute our method here. And then we expect the results. So the concepts are the same, but just a different syntax. So assertions also are the same, but in JavaScript, they look a little bit different. Um, when, while in PHP unit, you have assertions that are, let's say, um, n assert not true. So in, in JavaScript, you have uh, a modifiers. So you can add to every, uh, every expectation or assertion, you can add, have, for example, a not. So not to be in document, not to have been called, and not to be true. And this is how it looks like when you execute the test. So it's very similar. So the, the, you have the name of the tests, and you can see if it passed or didn't. And also, uh, the way you write the test is usually ending with test.js. So also in JavaScript, we have test coverage report. Um, so the coverage report within JavaScript is a little bit more uh, elaborate. So we have uh, the statement coverage, branch coverage, function coverage, and line coverage. So the most important thing for us is usually the branch coverage, which means that we're covering all the cases that the functions accepts. So another important thing about testing is within JavaScript is, te is testing React components. So in this case, um, I will talk about using React testing library. So there is also uh, basic setups for using React testing library. Um, we need to install a few dependencies and import the testing library just DOM to our tests and have uh, some a little bit more configuration for our test to read uh, the React components. And there is a different approach, uh, different, uh, yeah, a different approach to testing when testing React uh, component that it's more user-centric. So 
we're testing, especially with the React testing library, we're testing the way the user is interacting with the component. So this is a simple example of how um, testing with React testing li library is performed. So we are importing the render from testing library and we are having, again, the names of the test. We use the render to render our component. We get the queries uh, from the render and we have expectations. Same thing, but this time we're getting things from the component and testing uh, the elements in, in the component the way they are being rendered. So the advantage of using React testing library is that they have a query ba queries that are based on accessibility. So it encourages you to use to create an accessible components or use, for example, semantic HTML, use ARIA labels, because otherwise, if you want to to, to test a specific element in your in your component, the way you you get this component is not through the ID. The user doesn't see the ID. Is by is only it's through the label or the area label or the way the user see it. So by writing tests this way, we're also covering screen reader testing. So that <laughs> brought me to the same um, the same situation when I PR is ready. I just need to write tests, and then I realized my component is not accessible. So writing tests. Uh, also encourages you to write better components, or more accessible components. So this is an example of a query that is uh, more accessible. So here we have, we're using a get by label text. So actually we're getting an input, but we're not getting it by the input tag or by ID we're getting it by the label of the input. So that way, we know that the screen reader, for example, will get the, the component through, it has, a, it has a label to get to, to read for this um, element. And then we can assert it. So another concept with uh, JavaScript tests is snapshot tests. So snapshot tests are a very fun test to write <laughs> because they are very short <laughs> and they cover the entire component. So with snapshot tests, you are taking a snapshot of the HTML representation of your component. So basically it looks like that. The test itself generates a file with the HTML representation of your component and the next time you run the tests, it checks if the same, um, the same HTML representation of your components matches the snapshots. So that way you can also, uh, let's say you have different classes that you're using or styles and you want things to be the same, then uh, snapshot tests uh, helps you also with that. And it also saves you time if you want to check if certain elements are in the document instead of just writing uh, uh, just entire like 300 lines just to check if each element is in the document, you can just write a snapshot test. So the first time you run the snapshot tests, uh, you will see the, te the snapshot is being generated and in your folder where, you're, where you have the test, sorry, this one, you'll see a new folder, a snapshot test folder with the snapshot itself. The next time, and you'll see here, it's a snapshot was reading. The next time you run the test, you will see that it matches, it runs a, ma uh, a test for if it matches a snapshot. So if you want to read more about uh, React Testing Library or Jest, so these are the resources.
So how about testing in WordPress? Um, well, you will be happy to hear that everything we covered in this presentation is also done in WordPress core. <laughs> so Gutenberg is using Jest. Uh, it's using also React testing library. It using, it's using also Playwright is with the same syntax for end-to-end -end testing. And of course, it uses PHP unit. So you can have, uh, you can go to those uh, directories and get inspiration from those tests. That's it, thank you. And if you want to contact me, I'll be in the else booth. <laughs> Can you hear me? Perfect. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It's for you. Thank you. So thank you guys. Now we're about to do the Q&A. So we have the mics here. So wherever you have a question, just ask your uh, raise your hand and the girl, uh, the lady is going to give you the mic. So we're going for the first question. <laughs> It's not working. Hello? Okay. What would you recommend? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. What would you recommend if you have uh, AP connectors as a function? You do the same temps test. If you have API endpoints. And yeah, um, no API endpoints. Uh, when you have functions that are connecting to the API. So is that like a third-party API? Yeah. Yeah, so in this presentation, I covered uh, more unit tests. So the, in that case, you will need an integration tests. So that's for testing. Um, that's actually more for making sure that your third party is not crashing or something, and you will have a, you can get an early notice when your third party maybe has some problems. So that's what it used for. Another question? Uh, hello. Hello. Um, Lovro Hrust from Croatia. Uh, uh, I have two questions. First, uh, in your company, uh, do the same people uh, uh, who code also write tests, or you have a separate team for testing and separate for uh, coding? And another question is, um, it's not exactly WordPress, but I'm also a WordPress developer. Uh, we are working on one uh, application, uh, which is written uh, uh, Vue.js frontend, and uh, it's a lot of um, uh, it's a visual application. It has a uh, uh, charting. Uh, uh, it has maps and and and, and charts, and uh, it's uh, I'm not really expert in tests, and it, it's hard to me to 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 think of um, unit tests there. Uh, more like end-to-end uh, -end tests, but they are also hard to write because how uh, uh, should I test something which is so visual, you know, uh, like if map looks correctly or not. So, okay. I am, well, I think snap, I mean, for you can use a snapshot tests if you know exactly which styles should be there and you know you manually tested and and saw that the you have the the desired result and then you have then if you run a snapshot test you know that you can feel sure that if you refactor things or 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 change things in your code the snapshot test will detect changes visually in your html representation so maybe it doesn't test like the the css file but if you if something changes in the classes or something changes in the elements, then the snapshot tests will detect it. And for Yoast, uh, we um, actually unit tests are mostly should be written by the developers. And the recommendation is that end-to-end um, -end tests or integration tests would be either written by QA team. Um, we are we at Yoast. Um, we write the unit tests, the developers write the unit tests, and each developer usually reviews the other developer's code. So we have a kind of a system. 
but personally, uh, before working at Yoast, I was mostly working like as a, um, without, not in a team, but mostly alone. <laughs> so I used to, so it was very difficult to review your own code. And I think that test really helps the process. So that's uh, my experience with a team and without. So, yeah. And definitely end-to-end -end tests are more complicated and takes more time and resources. Just, just the time it runs for you to fix things and then you have to wait like three minutes for it to complete. Uh, it takes more time. But if you use React testing library, you have, you can cover a lot in unit tests with React testing library, the visual aspect. So. Another question? Oh. Yeah, hi, I was wondering, um, when you uh, test for the rendered HTML, uh, that was really, really impressive, by the way. Um, when you, uh, how does that work, for instance, with translations? Would you do a separate test for each language, or can you, when you test for the presence of a particular label, for instance, um, would you test for, for say, the la label of username? Would you test for each uh, different version of that name? Uh, would you, uh, is there a way to hook into the rendering of that particular label? I was wondering about that. That's a good question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Maybe we can discuss it later. Uh, yeah. So I'll be at the Yoast booth. We can discuss it later. <laughs> Any other question? Anyone? Yeah. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you're also using static code analysis and how this goes together with testing to ensure that you don't miss anything. Um, you're talking about the coverage reports? Stuff like PHP Stan or Psalm or tools like this, if you know those or use those. Um, not I. I'm not using. I mean, when I'm writing tests, I'm focused on the the coverage reports. I don't use other reports. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Anyone else? Hi, um, so I have one question. It might be tricky. Uh, you actually um, write test before functionality or um, uh, functionality first and test. Then. Right, there are two different approaches. Uh, one approach is, is like test-driven development, which means that you write the tests before you write the functionality, and then you write the functionality to make the test pass. <laughs> Um, personally, I write the test after, um, but I prefer to, in, in the memes that I added, I, I wrote like, I, I created a PR and then I wrote the tests. But actually, uh, it's not always the case. Sometimes, most of the time I try to write the test as part of the PR because while writing tests, I I discover many things that I need to refactor and things that I need to change. So the development process doesn't end. Uh, it, like the, the writing test is part of the development process or part of my PR and not like something separate after. But sometimes it happens to be like uh, in the contributor day, we had a, an issue that was already merged and, and solved and we needed to add tests only after. And yeah, we needed to refactor it, but sometimes that's, that's what, what happens. So, anyone else? No? Okay, I think we are good. Let's give a big round of applause for Vraja. Thank you.